So this is the picture that I'm drawing, and as you can see, um, the person taking the picture is above, um, they are standing above the what's being drawn, so it's below eye level. So the wagon and the little girl are below their eye level. And everything on the wagon vanishes on this side to this vanishing point, even the letters. So when you go and you draw everything in, it has to go, on this side has to go to this vanishing point. This is in two point perspective. Even the wheel, okay? And even the round part of the wheel, in order to figure that out, you have to start with the perspective of creating a box that this circle will fit in. On this side, everything is going to this vanishing point. And the vanishing points both have to fall on the eye level. So if you look closely at this picture, you can see that all the letters vanished to that vanishing point. All of the little lines on this side, this, the tops of the wheels, the top of the edge of the wheels, everything vanishes all the way up. To that vanishing point and same thing on this side all of these lines vanish to this vanishing point so if you're gonna draw in those little letters even though you can't really see them very much but even the highlight that is there that all has to be drawn in going to the vanishing points so you want to first while you have things set up and figuring figured out you want to get everything drawn in before you start doing your shading because you're eventually going to want to take it off of this bigger piece of paper. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about circles that are in perspective. A circle just like anything else, as it gets further away from you, it's going to distort. So if you draw a box for the circle to fit in, so this could be for like my wheels for instance, or even like the inside part of that wheel, it doesn't look like a perfect circle because just like the letters, it's skewed just like the side of the box. It gets smaller as it gets further away from you. So how do you do that? You can draw your box that it's gonna fit in and then you can draw an X through the box using the Xing method. Go right to your vanishing point Find all like those center points, draw a mark at the very top, side, bottom, this side, and then connect those with your circle and that will give you the way that your circle needs to be. Now if we're talking about letters, and obviously you have to draw your letters how you see them, um, most letters aren't exactly this blocky, but just to give you an example. This part of this L has to go to the vanishing point. This part of this T goes to the vanishing point. So make sure that everything is going to the vanishing point. This part is straight up and down. So think about that as you are drawing in some of the details that might have to come on your object. Okay, so here's my picture that I'm drawing from. This is my final sketch of my drawing. I first figured out very lightly all the vanishing points and I, I erased them. Now you don't necessarily have to if you draw them really lightly uh, or if it's if you've really made a mess on your paper you could always retrace your outlines on a new piece of paper. Um, just by putting it up against a window um, or a light box and retrace it. Um, but if you draw light enough, you don't need to do that. So I have the general outlines and I also have all the details that I want to appear um, on my drawing. The only thing I just realized, I forgot the little wheel in here, so I'll have to go back in and do that. Uh, so that's something that you want to double check and make sure that you've got 
everything drawn in how you want it before you start your shading. Now when you start your shading, you're going to be doing this just like you do your value scale. Your very lightest values are your whites. You're going to be leaving some areas white and they're going to be shapes. So when you're looking at your picture, your object that you're drawing from, um, what are the areas that are the whitest? You know, like if I'm looking at this rim here, I have some really white whites. Some parts of her shoe are going to be really light. Some parts in her leg are going to be really light. And some parts in her shirt and her hair are going to be really light. But I'm going to want to really over-exaggerate this. So I'm going to try to make sure that I leave some whites in all parts of this. So even though the wheels are black, there definitely are going to be some areas that I leave totally white on each wheel. Uh, then I will have to think about what are like the lightest shades as well. So what are the next shapes of lightest areas? And try to think of them as shapes. So I'm starting to try to chunk in shapes of lights and darks and just sh slowly, slowly shading them. So if I'm looking at my, uh, at my drawing here and I'm starting to shade, I can look at areas like the inside here of this is going to be pretty dark up against this edge. Remember to use short neat strokes, but it's not going to be all really dark. So I have to look at, it's the darkest shape kind of like right in here and then it starts to get a little bit lighter. So if I'm looking at that, I'm going to kind of compare those two areas. This starts to look a little bit lighter. So I'm going to over exaggerate that. So when I'm coming in here and I'm starting to shade, I'm going to slowly kind of like ease up on that area. I can always make something darker, but it's hard to make it lighter. So I want to over exaggerate this area a little bit more than it is and make that area a little bit lighter. As I move on to her leg, her leg is definitely lighter than it is back here. So kind of coming and taking this outline and bringing it out you either take your outlines and fade it into the object or into the background so this kind of becomes your background into the wagon you can make that darker right here but then this is going to be a really light area so kind of where her knee is right here this whole area is going to be a really 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 light value to kind of come in and start shading this in. So I'm starting to kind of block that in. One of the things that I'm doing as I'm coming through and shading is keeping my pencil really sharp. So I'm constantly stopping to sharpen my pencil as I'm coming in and shading. So that is constantly happening. So keep looking at your pencil and making sure that it's really sharp um, you can either use a pencil sharpener, you can use sandpaper, um, you can use an X-Acto knife if you don't have a pencil sharpener to sharpen your pencil to keep that really nice sharp. You want, you want it to have a long lead. So if your pencil sharpener sharpens really short, then that's where I would recommend then maybe using... Um, some sandpaper or something else to help get it longer. Um, but this should be good for shading. Okay, so I finished that one little area and notice that I pushed really hard along this outside edges. And that's because if you look at this area, it's definitely the darkest, like right in here. And it gets a little bit lighter through here. So I over-exaggerated that and emphasized, this, the, emphasized that through here. Um, 
as I start to work on her leg, her leg is gonna be lighter than this, but I can still start to come in and add some of the values that are gonna be in the leg, um, and it will still stand out from this uh, darker area. So there's some very light shapes on the little girl's leg. If you look at this, you can start to see um, they vary a little bit. Still, it's gonna be a little bit darker on your edge here and kind of fade in, but I'm starting to look for some of these shapes to draw that out. Some areas on her leg are gonna be left white because her skin is really light, uh, but you can't just leave everything white. Um, you need to show the value, and so sometimes in order to do that, you have to over-exaggerate the contrast. Okay, looking at her shorts, there's a lot of shapes of different values of lights and darks, so as you're coming in, you want to make sure that, like, I'm going to leave some of these areas white, but there's a lot of little shapes that I'm going to be coming in and starting to draw in as I'm working through this. So I'm coming in, and I might be pushing a little bit harder for some of those shapes that are pretty dark. And then I'm going to be definitely like easing up from wrinkles so I'm, it might be a little bit darker and then slowly kind of like ease up from an area as it gets lighter so you're looking for all of those shapes right here on the edge it's really light so then the background is darker so that's where you can start to bring that outline up into the background because things don't have outlines As you're shading through, remember to look at the object or whatever it is that you're drawing and notice that like this is lighter so your background is going to be darker. So that's how that outline fades into the background. So when you hear me say fade your outlines into the background or into the foreground, that's what I mean. So make a decision about does it fade into the background or does it fade into the foreground.